Another plan explained here at 25 NL zoom. Let's see if we can do some damage today. We already have a caller here on the button. Excellent. We can just check obviously with 9.5 and we flop two pair. I think this is a good opportunity to just lead out and I am going to go fairly big here kind of like almost pot and unfortunately the club is not great but I will still go for value here and I can just bet fold going to block bet this third pot because if he has a nine or a jack he will call and if we didn't get the call in the end unfortunately the club draw coming in might have scared him off or maybe he just had a straight draw of some sort that didn't come in so then we would never have gotten any money out of him on the river but okay start so far queen jack offsuit definitely going to raise here on the button nine do suited though this is a hand that we can open. And he might be thinking about three betting us. Oh. Top pair on this board. I could go small or big. On the button I would go small. Under the gun I would go big here. I'm closer to the button. And I do have the king of spades. So I can just go small and that kind of invited this player to check raise which is not great but definitely nothing else to do for me than to call there he now checks surprisingly it was quite a quick check don't really know what to make of it but i will obviously check behind and this is not a great river with him but he checks again, and I don't think I can go for value here. He check raised. He might still be either trapping or he has absolutely nothing. We might even have ace jack. I will just check and probably win it. Yeah, he had ace queen. That's interesting. So he didn't three bet pre flop, which is fine, but then check raised the flop with just two overs. But fair enough. We won the pot and I think I played it well and I'm still fine with not having gone for value on the river with my top pair good kicker when the flash came in here we have a cold caller in the small blind and the big blind calls as well on this board against two players I will not go for a continuation bet now we have a gut shot here but he bets pretty big he calls i mean if we hit our gut shot it's great but the club five is not an out so i will fold i just want to view the end of the hand we would have made top pair now and we would have won it but we were behind so i'm okay with that not calling there what did Capone have? He had pocket sevens, okay, and he had the ten there. So yeah, no, I'm it was a good fold, even though we would have gotten there in the end. Here we have a call. This I don't want to raise with uh, such a hand that's not suited. If it had been suited, I would have raised. So he checks, we now have a gut shot, but the ace is good for him. He might have checked back an ace there. I don't really want to go because I would have had to go for an over bet. And here, so this is interesting. Like, what could he have? I will, I am going to block bet this one because I think he could have tens, nines, eights that he would look me up against this small bet. But he did have the ace. Okay, well, yeah, I would have expected him to bet the ace, but no harm done because he would have bet the river anyway, probably for value. And depending how big he had made it, I would have had to call. So I'm okay with a block bet there on the river. 
even though I did not necessarily expect to see an ace. But yeah, I think it was all right the way I played it. We've played quite a few hands already on here. VPIP of 37%, but only over 20 odd hands. And now we're getting a few hands that are less playable. Here, a 9 7 suited is very borderline. 10 8, I would have opened. 9 8, I would have opened. But 9 7, I think, is slightly on the losing side, especially because I had an aggressive button and an aggressive big blind here. Pocket threes, we definitely have to call pre flop. If he bets now, I will fold. I might still be ahead, but I won't be ahead by much because even if he has a hand like 9-7 here, he still has quite a few outs and he can double barrel and then I will have to fold later. Here, this is interesting. I mean, I could go for a block bet here, but... I don't really want to. That would have been for protection if he has some ace high or so. Now he bets big and I, I'll i just fold. So maybe I should have bet here, but I still think I, I have an under pair to the board and there is no reason for me to do anything there. I think it was fine to just fold. few not so playable hands now. A6 off is just a pip too weak to open in the cutoff. Would have been fine on the button obviously. 8-6 suited that's even worse than 9-7 suited that I had earlier in that position. And I chose to fold. King 10 off will definitely be an open. It is a low frequency 3 bet against a cutoff open, but I don't really know much about him. And as I said, it's a low frequency 3 bet, so I think I will just fold there. Yeah, our VPIP is already going down significantly. My VPIP in general tends to be around 23-24% and the preflop raise the PFR around 19 or 20. I think that's quite healthy in general. 3-bet percentage, I aim to keep it in the double digits, 10-11%. We just want to build that red line and being aggressive pre-flop is a very good way of doing that. 7-4 suited I will not call against an under the gun race, definitely not against a low, uh, the hijack 3-bet, but now we have ace-king offsuit. This could be an interesting hand, definitely going for the 3-bet here against a rather aggressive player not a lot of info about him okay so his three bet and four betting so far was done with pocket kings no surprise there okay i do not like this jam here but if he folds i will have to call it's only 53 big blinds i only have to call 42 to win 66 and he can do this with a lot more than aces and kings as we can see, he jammed with ace-8, and okay, so we chop this one, we'll make a note that he jammed 
53 BB with Ace 8 suited over a 3 bet. So we can raise this one. So I, I should say cold 4 bet jammed with a in big blind. Okay. 7 deuce off. Not going to play the 7 deuce game. Definitely not going to play the 7 deuce game. Not going to play the 3 deuce game either. Yeah, I've not been very lucky with my all ins recently. The other day, I was a massive favorite. I had a set against Pocket Queens, got it in on the flop, and then he hit his queen on the river and then a few other hands not quite as drastic but still similar to that and today we're just chopped with ace king against ace eight here ten nine off not much i can do I have to fold queen eight off will be a fold uh, well let's see yeah, definitely against the button, against the small blind, they would have re-evaluated, but against the button raise, it is a fold. Not too many interesting spots so far today. Well, let's hope we can have a few more. So A3 suited, definitely a fold here in a cash game. In a tournament, this would probably have been a fold just about. But here, definitely nothing to do in a cash game. A7 suited will be an open. Yeah, they're playing quite tight here. I haven't seen anyone get out of line except maybe our friend with the ace eight suited. I can actually label as a non-crusher to be politically correct. Yeah, now our VP PFR has dropped significantly to 16.14. I would like to have a hand that I could open or do something with. Here, yeah, this might just be the one, although not with a cold caller. This, this is very tricky. I mean, being out of position against two opponents, both from early position... And then also the small blind calling, I will just fold. And it's good that I did, because I pretty much whiffed that flop. Here, ace four suited, I'm not going to continue, definitely not now. But even otherwise, with a 20 big blind stack there, and me being in the small blind with the bluff, raise if it, if it were a raise it would be a bluff raise here we get snapped off by this small blind and we're probably going to get squeezed by the big blind i have a feeling yep that's exactly what I thought, and because it took so long, I think he might, I think it's quite likely that he didn't have an amazing hand. It was probably a bluff squeeze, however, with the other player in there as well, I think it's best to just fold. Here, with pocket hands, I could of course have raised, but it was a low jack raise. And so I think it's fine to just call there. Here against this small bet, there's nothing else to do than to just call. You could 
we see betting quite wide on this king although as we can see he doesn't see bet much so if he see bets again here on the turn then i'll be out he doesn't do that so i wonder what he could have should he should we let him bluff here i don't think this is the type of player that will bluff but on the other hand he might have queens jacks and so on so i will just check here and see what he does he checks behind and max i don't mind that he had queen jack yeah so we would never have gotten a bet out of him if we had gone for the block bet there pocket kings this could be a hand let's see definitely go into raise gonna make it 3x here against this early position raise we get called on this board i can either go big or check i have the king of hearts and we're up against an well we're up against a non aggressive opponent which is why i am gonna go for the big bet here unfortunately we got a fold but i think we could have gotten a bet out of pocket hands a jack maybe ace jack suited king jack suited queen jack suited maybe some other pocket fair here i don't have a lot going for me but i still think i want to see bet this one just because I've noticed that my seabed percentage is a bit low. Uh, this this is an annoying one because I really don't know what to make out of it. This is a player who is very, very passive in general. He now donks here on this board where I just frankly have nothing. So whatever he has, I just have to fold even though he make, made it small. But I basically just see that in the hope to just get this pot for cheap didn't happen and when he says that he's got something and he's quite tight and passive player so then i will just believe him and yes he might just have had the flush draw there but more often than not i think it was value maybe an ace that turned two pair or something like that so i'm happy with the fold here this guy i mean we could go either way i just like to three bet sometimes with these small or middling pocket pairs because as you can see we do get quite a few folds and we do have position on the flop in case we get called and it's rare to get four bets in these games especially cutoff versus button here tricky one because this guy doesn't like folding to three bets but i still think pocket nines is just about a borderline three bet and if he calls too wide here then i don't mind that either obviously this is not like a massively winning spot it is pretty borderline either way but we do get away with it and that is a great result. Ten three suited, not a hand I'm going to do much with. Just an easy muck. King nine off will be a raise on the button, but not against a cutoff raise. So let me know in the comments what stakes you guys play. It would just be interesting to see and hear whether you play similar stakes or lower ones or higher, or you maybe you play live poker predominantly because that is what I actually do. So I have my other channel here. If you haven't seen it yet, go and check it out. Live poker guide is what it, I call it, and there I talk a lot more about exploits of all sorts 
Here, pocket queens, this is an absolutely atrocious flop for my hand, for my range. It's obviously not that bad, but I will just check behind because I really don't like this and I will have to check again here. And let's hope we can just have a showdown. If he bets, which he doesn't, it's good. Well, I'm no reason whatsoever to go for value here against pocket fours. That's one of the few hands we win against. No, it's not true. He 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 would have had a lot of hands there that didn't connect with the board, but I think that he might have bluffed them at some stage. That's why I'm saying probably some sort of a small pocket pair is the only hand that we beat. Yeah, so I have this channel, Life Poker Guide, where I talk a lot about all sorts of concepts, thin value betting on the river and bluff catching, how to do that and all sorts of other interesting poker topics. Plus, you can see my vlog where I play live poker. So go and check that out. I'll leave the link in the description below as well. Yeah, not a lot of spots still here. Played 112 hands. And I haven't really had a spot that went beyond the flop, I think. That was really relevant. So here we have a limper. Let's give him the non-crusher attack. 9-5 was a good one earlier on. We do have bottom pair here, but no reason to bet with bottom pair. Now we still we have an open ender to go with our bottom pair. And he now bets. Absolutely calling here. We did not improve, and if he bets again, then I would fold. But yeah, he had a better five. But still, obviously, a good call there on the turn because we had the open ended straight draw. Here, pocket fours is just not good enough, especially I've given this player the aggressive tag. So I could get four bet there. And pocket fours is just too weak. Pocket sixes, probably, and definitely pocket sevens, I would have raised there. King nine suited, going for the open. This guy, I can give him the blue tag, which is the reg. Okay, four, five, six suited. Absolutely not the kind of flop that's good for my range. I definitely have to check behind. Now we have top pair, and he could do this with a lot of hands. I will call here. And if he fires again, this one will be tricky. The thing is, we haven't filtered at all here. Would he go this big with just like a, a nine? No. I just think this line is overbluffed because he's basically telling me that he has a very good hand here and he improved and even the 10 doesn't scare him, but it's not good enough maybe to have diamonds so i think this is a hand where i can go for a call he doesn't have well how, how much value does he have he does have quite a bit in this line but he also has a lot of combos that are bad and yeah i just think this is an overbluffed line well <laughs> okay that's what do i know he did have the the straight there that was kind of the hand that i was thinking about that could take this line but it was how likely is it for him to have eight seven suited there there are only four combinations of which one is a straight flush that he might have <coughs> excuse me played a bit differently and then there are only three combos of that and i just thought he, he just has way too much air. I showed weakness. Well, I mean, I, I opened in the low jack and maybe I don't need to show 
much strength there on that board, but still, here we have a clear fold, by the way. Um, yeah, I still think it was an okay call to make there. But I will certainly review that hand again. On now, yay! Getting a walk with nine three off, king six off is just a little bit too weak. King seven or king eight off, I would have opened, and even those would be very borderline. King four four off on the bot button, not good enough either. King nine suited. I would open king eight suited is my bottom of definite opens and sometimes I open king seven suited, king six suited even. So I've spoken about this before, but it's very important to memorize your opening ranges in all positions, not necessarily to always religiously stick to them, but definitely to know what to open in certain situations. Here, 9, 8 suited. Well, this is a very thin one. This is the bottom of my raising 3 betting range here. But this player f does fold kind of appropriately to 3 bets, which is why I went for it. Speaking of folding appropriately, I have folded 3 out of 3 times today, but that's because I was close to the bottom of my range every time someone opened. Here, this is a loose open, but I knew I would be against this uh, recreational player here. I think I will go for a check here. Ace, eight, seven is not as great as it looks. And now here I can now try to go for a bigger bet because he checked behind and he snap fold. He already clicked the fold button, I think, before I bet if that's even possible. But yeah, that type of player I think he would have bet if he had had something. Here, king, queen, off. I am happy to three bet this one again. Against a reg. We have an open ender here. This hand. Can we go? I think we can go for a for a big bet. So this is a board where we either big bet or check and even if we get raised here we could continue obviously with the open ender and two over cards and the um, backdoor flush draw. So c-betting there was good. The c-betting percentage is 50%. I mean only 4 out of 8 today anyway. But that is something I try to focus on because I've noticed that I'm slightly on the low side with my C betting, which obviously is not good because you want to be within the parameters of what good players have. So what are your leagues? Maybe you can let me know in the comments. Maybe I can even make a video one day. Here I will just follow Jack7 is not good enough to call. Yeah, so it would be interesting to hear what your leaks are. I have discovered a few of mine and I'm working on them and soon I will probably have uh, live study sessions on YouTube. I haven't decided yet whether I'll have them on this channel or on my other one, but I will definitely have them. Okay, here I have to concentrate now. So this guy has three bet. I could just four bet or jam and I think I will just jam here because I can get called by queens, jacks or ace king but we get snap folds by everyone. It's still okay to take down this pot. Yes, so I 
I will have study sessions here, probably drilling and training sessions with GTO, Wizard, and I think that could be very helpful for you guys too. So there I will work on some of my leaks and therefore it would be interesting to find out what your leaks are. Maybe we can work together on those as well. Yeah, we're gonna play for another 10 minutes or so before we then have to wrap it up. King 7 suited, I would have opened, but in this small block, this is just a fold. Still not playing the seven deuce game. No, it's tempting if he raises, but I still think it's just like a tiny bit too weak. If you had made it like 2.5 or so, I would have considered calling. But this is a, a rag who I've tagged as a weak rag, but he's very tight and rather passive. And seven deuce even suited. And even in position is not the type of hand I want to have against a tight passive player. Well, or anyone for that matter, to be honest. Going through a rough patch once again. King 8 off. If the button raises, will be very, very borderline. Yeah, it is very borderline. Okay, I will open it. And I flopped a pair, which is good. If he C bet small, this will be a raise, which he doesn't. And now I can go for a bet here. I don't want to make it too big, especially because of the flush. I don't think I can get called by much worse. Here now, I mean the queen, he shouldn't have a lot of queens there. I will go for a block bet once again. Maybe getting heroed by ace high or pocket pair below the eight this obviously is not great he might be outplaying me here i obviously won't call but yeah he i don't think he would do this like as a bluff yes with the ace of spades maybe but it's definitely a fold he's a tight player 15 11 over 56 hands don't think there is a lot of bluffs in that line from a player who's shaping up to be that tight. So I'm okay with that. I could have considered just checking there, but I still thought that I would get enough weaker hands to call and I only invested a small percentage of the pot. Here this one we can raise for value against a non-crusher. And then we have another non-crusher calling my 4x here. We have Topair. Topair, this guy takes a lot of stabs, I would imagine. So that was why I checked exploitatively, but I didn't really like this. I will just go for another check here, even though it seems weird, but I think he would bet big. And now, at this point, I will just go 30. Let's go 14 here and just make it look really bluffy. The thing is, he ha his c-bet percentage was 5 out of 5. That's why I thought that he might take a stab there, he didn't do so. 
Now, this is exactly the same player, and he three bets us. It is very, very close, but fives were already um, borderline open there in the low jack. And then if we get three bet, especially to a bigger size, I will let it go. The only reason why I considered calling was because he is a weaker player, so I might be able to stack him if he hit if we hit a set. But it was still slightly too big the raise there, and that's why I opted to fold in the end. Here against this guy, I will also just check. Oh, this is not a great turn. I have to check again. And because he checks, it's, it's good. I will most likely have the best hand. But if I bet now, then I don't think I can get called by worse. So yeah, he did have a 9 there. But I think he might have found a fold. So a bet would have been too thin. And yeah, I could have c-bet there to get my c-bet percentage up. Because it's still it's only 40% now. But... I'm still happy with the way I played it. No regrets. Queen nine off. Not the greatest of hands. I will call here, especially against the smaller bet. And here, I am going to go for the stab. Although we might get check raised. Here we still have two overs, which is why I will go for the. Well, can I really wrap something? I think he's inelastic because if he had the hand like ace high or king high, he would have called anyway. And now with him calling two barrels there, me having the nine of spades, I just don't think I can get a lot to fold. Would he have called two barrels with ace high? I don't think so. And he had a full house. Okay, well, I would never have been able to fold him off that one. So he got the maximum out of me. And maybe he should have check raised the uh, turn there. Okay, here it's definitely not a range bet, but I treat it a bit like that if there are two broadways. Broadway, I count the 10 as a broadway as well now here. But simply like two cards of 10 and above, because then we have, definitely have the range and the nut advantage. So I'm happy to bet that one. Especially against a tight player. And this guy playing with under 10 big blinds. Queen 7 suited is a raise. Yeah, rather uneventful session today, unfortunately. But I still think we had a few interesting spots there. Definitely have some hands to analyze afterwards. But yeah, after this orbit, I will just wrap it up. Just playing these last few hands. As you can see, only 1916 here on my stats for today. Also, three betting, only 8%. You're definitely not folding to a min click from the small blind. And this is a pretty good board for us. I will go for the bet. He is not aggressive. Now on this ace, I mean, if he has an ace, that's great for us. If not, then it's not great. But I'm just going for big value now here. And he does call. And the queen 
shouldn't help him either, but he either has some sort of an ace or so. I mean, we might be beat if he has a better hand than us, but I'm still gonna go for the over bet here once again and hoping to get called by something like ace jack or maybe some e even another ace. If we get raised now, that's really grim because I don't think that we would beat anything, but he finds a fold unfortunately not that i wanted to get raised but i wanted to get called by worse obviously he did call the over bet on the turn at least so we got some value out of him queen jack suited is a nice potential lost hand well very anti-climatic Getting another one and another one. Ooh, ace 10 off. Maybe this is an interesting one to finish off with. Well, pool being very nitty at this moment. And we're still getting more hands to play. Well, this is it now. Let's just have a very quick look at how we did today. Very happy with that, obviously, the ace-king against ace-eight, all in, this is the discrepancy here. But we, we won, like, what, tw like, in theory, 28 big blinds, we won, well, eight big blinds. And the red line is quite positive, even though I had to fold to all the three bets today. But still quite happy with that, and, yep, hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye!